Hey everybody, welcome. This is a tutorial on Actix Web, Diesel, and SQLite. And what we're going to be doing today is building out a very simple API which is going to allow you to uh, use JSON and send some link data in, save that in the database, and then pull that link data out. That's really all it's going to do. Uh, we're going to start with building a very simple web server that serves a single page. I'm not going to build a front end for the API part. I'm not going to build like a web page so we can see everything come up nice and pretty. I'll maybe leave that for a second series or something like that for, uh, I don't know, building something with React or whatever. Okay, uh, so I'm not an expert on any of this, just to get that out there. I, I've been kind of tooling around with Rust for a little while now, so I've got some knowledge, but I'm definitely not super knowledgeable. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. If I can do something better, if you see some way I may be screwed up somehow, just leave a comment down below. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and build a new demo project. Okay, uh, with the demo project, I'm gonna of course get my configuration stuff here and I'm gonna get my main file, but actually the main file, I am going to kill everything in there. And here, I'm gonna go ahead and put my dependencies in. So the dependencies that you're gonna need are obviously Actix Web, but one that you may not know you need is the Actix Runtime. So the Actix Runtime is what allows us to do the async stuff. The Actix Web is what's gonna help us build the whole server. So I. Uh, the web stuff allows you to build an HTTP server. The, R, the uh, runtime is gonna be, I think it's built on Tokyo, and it's gonna do the async stuff for us. If you're not familiar with Rust and async, it's kind of different than other languages because they don't include the runtime within it. You have to get a, it's, a, it's gonna be a, a crate from somewhere, somebody else's tooling is gonna let it do the runtime. So that's, that's good and bad, but uh, it's, it can make it more difficult when you're trying to figure out which runtime to use, but for the most part, I feel like people just use Tokyo these days for 90% of the stuff I see out there for async. All right, uh, one thing I am going to do is even though I haven't done anything yet, I'm gonna build this because it's gonna take a little while to compile all of the dependencies. So we got 182 things there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to hide that and we can pretend like it's not running even though I can hear my fan spinning as it downloads upwards of a gig of stuff it seems these days. Whenever I build stuff it seems like my target directories are becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, you'll find that with Rust like if you're using Nightly especially you'll find that uh, stuff your target directory gets massive. I just recently I had Oh, I just recently went through and cleared out about 80 gigs of stuff uh, in the target folders. Okay, uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm pulling in some of the things we need. I, I'm not going to introduce these until I use them, so just hold on a second. All right, now we're ready to build our main. Uh, so in the main, we're going to, once again, attach the runtime. So if you've done anything with Tokyo, this will look very, very familiar. Okay, just like that. And async uh, function name. And what I'm gonna do is return the result, which is going to be in, oh, actually, you know what? It's gotta be std, uh, yeah, I/O result. So that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, and this is gonna return nothing. Later on, it'll still be nothing, but I'm actually gonna change this uh, no longer going to be using standard standard I/O. Uh, it's going to be using another package, which is going to help us take care of some issues. So as you build this out, you're going to see a ton of red as well. But please don't panic. A lot of this stuff will be fixed. Rust uh, is very helpful, um, but it also can make you feel really bad about yourself as you're going through, and it's yelling at you, and there's just tons of red everywhere because everything you're doing is probably wrong. Okay, right. um, I'm gonna build a new app here. So what I did here, and I'll explain this in just a second, and hopefully I explain it well enough. Let's see, won't route. 
so you can tell my typing is kind of crappy because I'm looking at some of my notes over here while I do this. Uh, we're going to call this home here. Okay, so uh, what we've got here is we've got uh, the HTTP server. We're going to create a new one. And then you've got this move and you've got uh, this, it's a closure. So anonymous function that we're passing inside. Uh, kind of what's happening here is the, in the background, you're going to have the HTTP server and that's what's going to be sitting there waiting. And this app, new route, this whole thing right here is saying, we are assigning a route to be listened to. So this will get read somewhere in the HTTP server. It's going to store that information and it's going to sit there and wait and wait and wait and, and just going to loop forever until we kill the server. This is our way of assigning a specific route to a specific function. So we're just going to get this function. I haven't defined home yet. It's going to be another async function, which is going to end up returning an HTTP response, which has our index.html in it, which you'll see in just a minute. Uh, but this anonymous function stuff can get a little confusing for some people. You have to think of it as in the way of you want to be able to call all of this stuff. So if you are passing in it as a function, it's it's able to call this. So like a callback type thing, right? You're able, you're passing in the function to be called at some given point. All right. Uh, now I'm going to bind this. That's probably a somewhat crappy uh, explanation, but it's kind of how I think of it. I, I think I need that there and dot awaits. Okay. So uh, right now things are looking good. We've got only one little bit of red and it's just saying that that uh, home function hasn't been defined. So for every single route that you have, you're going to have a, a function associated with it. And it's very similar to other languages. If you've done something in Flask or you've done something in uh, maybe, I don't know, if you've done something in Node, if you've done something in any any server type thing, any HTTP server is going to be really, really sim similar uh, in that regard. So I've got a result and this result is going to return a response and an error. Okay, and actually, I need to put in air here. Um, let's go back here. Let's put in, I'm trying to keep them in alphabetical order somewhat. So, okay, uh, so when, we're, when we build out a route, uh, a route is returning a result. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this in okay and it's going to be a HTTP response. And that response, we're gonna build it and it's gonna have a status code of okay. okay. And content type, hopefully this is pretty obvious here. The uh, type will be HT, HTML and we're gonna be using a character set as UTF-8, okay? And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to include the body and this body we're going to use this macro called include string and what this is going to do is point to this HTML file and obviously we have not created that HTML file so we're going to need to create it. All right, so let's go ahead and make our folder over here. So a new folder, we're going to call this templates and our templates and we're gonna put index.html and we're gonna create a basic HTML page. So let's go in here and we'll put h1 and I will just write where it was here. Done, okay, so pretty simple, I hope. And let's see, will this kick in and say yes? Sometimes it takes a while. Something, there's something weird about the air handling stuff I've noticed with visual code and actually with Vim, it's almost the same thing. It takes a while to either register that it's an error or it doesn't clear the air once you've actually fixed something. All right, so hopefully this stuff now, if I try to rebuild this down here, it's not gonna have to rebuild 85 million things for me. It will have all of that stuff already compiled. Build, build, build and finish. So see, you notice 
it's still complaining about this error at the moment, but you know what? It didn't complain about it here. So I don't know what goes on with this. I've tried sometimes, I don't know, refresh, whatever. It'll probably go away in a second. Uh, let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay, so remember we're serving on this here. So let's go ahead and do local host um, 8888. And we get this. Awesome, it works. So we're all happy and we're serving our page even if it's still complaining about this error. So let's take a look at some of this stuff just in case we're not entirely sure what's happening. We start off, we create the server and we're binding it to this address with this port 8888, which is very, very lucky uh, and run and then await. So basically we're just sitting here at the moment and you can imagine that there's a loop in the background and that loop has this anonymous function as one possibility. It takes this route and says, hey, when I'm done, when I hit this, when someone calls this and uses this route, we're gonna you know, run over, do this little function here, and we'll get a HTTP response back from it, which in this case is just going to return a um, index which has this or whatever you put in here. All right, so I hope that's pretty simple to understand at this point. Uh, we're gonna end up moving this to its own file in the next video and doing a bunch of other stuff. In fact, We'll probably just get rid of this eventually, but I want to leave it up there for now so we can use it to say to test or something to see if the server is actually up or not. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments as well. All right, uh, thanks for watching.